Welcome everyone to Africam for Good, brought to you by explore.org. Today we're going to be talking to Iggy Bukhatsu, who works at Tau Game Lodge on Madikre Game Reserve in the northwest province of South Africa. Good morning, Iggy. Good morning, James. How are you doing? We're doing very well, thank you. Sadly, not up in the bush like you are, but um, we'll live vicariously through you for the next half an hour or so. At the outset, can you tell us a little bit more about what you do? Right. Um, I am the head range of the Tau Game Lodge ranging team or guarding team, if I put it that way. Uh, pretty much operational and all the other things that have to do with guests, game drafts and walks and all of that. Okay. And are you still guiding yourself or do you find yourself doing a lot more administration? I'm doing both, uh, but more guiding than admin. Um, admin is more uh, once off every so often, but mostly guiding. Okay. And how long have you been doing it? Um, I've been with Tao Game Lodge since uh, November 2012. Um, um, overall, I have been guiding for 21 years, going 22 at the moment. Okay. So you're a veteran of the wilderness. I wouldn't call myself a veteran yet. <laughs> um, but yeah. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit more about Tao and Madikwe? How does it all fit in? And where is Tao in Madikwe? And what can one expect if one goes there? Lodge is situated in the northwest corner of Madikwe Game Reserve. Um, it's one of the first three lodges that were built when Madikwe first started. Tao Game Lodge was opened in 1995. Um, so it's been around for quite a while. Um, we are the biggest lodge in the reserve. We're 60 bat lodge. And obviously looking through the webcam, you can see what our lodge has to offer in terms of game view. We've got the biggest water hole in front of the lodge. So we've got an array of animals coming throughout the day, throughout the night. Okay. Uh, you say it's a 60 bed lodge. Yes. And tell us a little bit about Madikwe Game Reserve. Madikwe is a 75 hectare size game reserve, uh, malaria free. Um, like we've mentioned, it's, it's situated in the northwest province, right against the Botswana border. Um, it's a big five reserve. Um, and we also boost cheetah and wild dog sightings as well. So you said 75,000 hectares? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, we've seen some amazing animal sightings at Tau. Um, have you watched the cam and what's been one of your, if you do, what's been one of your favorite sightings on the camera? Um, sure. It would be unfair to select one particular sighting. Uh, we've had cheetah, cheetahs, we've had wild dog kills, we've had lion kills, we've had, uh, you name it. Uh, with elephants and what have you, uh, you, you decide what's the best. You know, to choose one would be unfair to the other. That's very cool. And I suppose probably that's a function of the fact that you have that water hole in front of the camera, in front of the, the lodge. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Um, we've seen a few lion hunts on the camera, as you've mentioned. Can you tell us a little bit about the lions at Tau? Where do they come from? How many are there? And how a little, maybe a little bit about lion management on Madikwe. We in the northwest part of the reserve, we've got a the pride that we call the top of pride. It consists of mainly four females, and there's two young newly born cubs that we actually saw for the first time just after Christmas. Um, when the mother introduced them to the pride for the first time. Um, and hopefully in the near future, we will have more new cubs. That pride is actually descend descendants of the original type of pride. So the ones that we have are actually youngsters of youngsters of the original type of pride. And they've done, they've done a, a great job. Uh, they're giving us obviously spectacular sightings. And 
now we've got new males that have just come into the area and obviously it's a process of accepting the new males the, you know the females accepting the new males um over the past two three weeks or so ago they have been mating um that's why i'm saying hopefully in the near future we will have new additions to the pride sounds like a great pride and Madikwe is an enclosed reserve it's a very big reserve but it's it's enclosed um i don't are you guys ever involved in the lion management do you just let the lions manage themselves is it big enough to do that or do you exchange lion genetics with other reserves from time to time it's an it's an ongoing process um exchange lions with other reserve obviously for genetic purposes it's a it's a need you know the, the once you've got uh, fences around wildlife you need to mm. physically manage population and make sure your genetics are all in order um we have in the past moved lions to velka and sufui umfolozi pilans back and all of that and brought now we just brought new males from ado we just brought new males you know it, it's it's an ongoing process so lions are being managed and dialogue is occasionally involved we work hand in hand with the ecological team um not too long ago we branded one of the new females young female that's part of the chaba pride i actually had i got to do the branding myself <laughs> which was a cool. yeah it's an experience it's quite a good experience cool and tau means lion doesn't it yes it's son of in, a lion in setswana yeah Yes. All right, great. Another big favorite with our Africam audience of the cheetahs of course, and there seems to be a female and three sabalots around. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Yes, we do have uh six cheetah in Madikwe. It's two males, that female and her three sabalots. Um about a week two weeks ago, the sabalots actually got collared. um because she's in the process of mating again which means they have to be on their own uh, a couple of days ago they were actually spotted uh, on the northern boundary um on their own they are they seem to they seem to be doing great so if the mating has gone well um soon by the end of this winter we will have new cheetah cubs again in, in the reserve which is a right. great success and that female has done pretty well it had it was her first litter um she had four she only lost one which which is a great success story for her. and you tell me the, the cheetah capacity of madikwe is the reserve management going to maintain it at around the number that it is now or would they like to see it increase slightly um the plan is to get at least one or two more females into the reserve Okay. because the two males that we have are pretty much roaming the whole reserve um but obviously it's still in the discussion stages so there, there is no final decision that has been made yet but obviously the plan is to try and increase the population a little bit um which will help with sightings as as as, as we go on further cool now water in africa as we know is often filled with danger but often small water or smallish water holes we don't necessarily associate with crocodiles but the tau water hole seems to have quite a popular group of crocodiles that our audience loves very much and um, where did they come from and do you know anything about them the the crocodiles that we have at our water hole were actually brought in by the previous owner robert gerard um uh I, i i'm not 100% sure where he got them from we've got five of them um and they seem to have settled in pretty well since they were brought into the water hole <laughs> must be quite terrifying i imagine for the animals coming down to drink we've no, we've noticed that one of the crocodiles has a missing tail do you have any idea why or how that happened um there was a fight amongst the <laughs> amongst them and that's how he got to lose a little bit of a tail end um yeah it was just a squabble between them i think obviously uh, establishment of hierarchy and, and all of that and do you have any names for the crocs 
No, we do not. Um, see, the thing is, once you start naming animals individually, you get that attachment sentiment. And okay. when nature does take its course, you want to get involved, you know, like you would with a pet. Mm. Uh, the minute you put a name onto it, it becomes a pet. And you know, with wildlife, you just, in most cases, just let nature take its own course. Okay. Also, I imagine other than the one missing its tail, it's probably quite difficult to tell apart. Well, all of them, yes. You know, we there is the biggest of the five is a female. Okay. Um, she, she was seen two or three years ago laying eggs, but obviously nothing has part from there. You know, we've got monitor lizards and whatnot, that obviously. Mm -hmm do monitor those things and I think they raided the nest and um, we would have little crocodiles at the moment if, if that mm. was able to don't have anything. Okay, let's move away from the water hole. What's your favorite animal to see on Game Drive and why? Um, that, that is a difficult question. I get asked that a lot. Mm. And uh, my answer is, it's unfair to choose one animal from the other. I do enjoy watching young animals, irrespective of what they are. You know, it could be elephants, it could be wildebeest, it could be zebra, young. They all have got one thing in common. You know, they live in oblivion, like as in other young, every other young species. Uh, they feed, play feed, play. Uh, you look at these ones out in the reserve where there's lions and hyenas and wild dogs and cheetah and whatnot. It's almost like they don't know what's out there. You know, they're just loving life as it comes as and when. That's a really interesting answer. Um, I don't think I've heard that answer before, but it really does resonate. I think that's a great answer. They live in sort of happy oblivion. Without exactly. any of the stresses that will come with that adulthood. Now, that's really cool. Um, what animal would you love to see on the TAR camera? What hasn't arrived there that you think might arrive and delight us, our audience, and maybe you as well? Two animals. Pangolin, Artvark. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen pa Pangolin on Madikwe? I have. Only twice in 21 years of guiding. <laughs> he was. And Artvark? Uh, Artvark I've seen a couple of times. Okay. Always at night or sometimes? Always at night. Really? The, the first time I saw an Artvark was late afternoon. It was just before sunset. And fortunate enough, God bless, I actually we watched it dig a hole and disappear into a hole. Oh, wow. That's very cool. Did you have guests? Yes, we were on Game Drive. Okay. They must have been absolutely blown away. It's, well, it's, I hope they yeah, were. It, it, it's, it's unexplainable. It, mm. It's so quick, it disappeared, digging a hole and just going in mm. and disappearing. I imagine with some guests who are just out here, maybe they're from overseas, they don't know what an art fark is, and then they see this strange animal and it disappears and they don't really realize the special thing they've seen. How special it is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. On AfriCam for Good, we always like to talk about conservation work. And can you tell us about any conservation work that Tao is involved with and possibly also about any community involvement that Tao has, any community projects? All right. Let's start with the community project part of the question. Dow has established, or the previous owner of the lodge has established what's called the Tao Foundation, which helps the obviously less advantaged families in the local community with uh, studying buzzeries um, and feeding schemes at the schools for disadvantaged kids and uniform sponsoring of books and computers and whatnot. Uh, <clears throat> constantly getting funding and donations from the guests that we get um, also keeps the foundation going. Um, there's been a numerous number of students that have um, graduated from universities, Cape Town, 
vet university, uh, metallurgists, you name it, you name it. Um, and uh, it's an ongoing project. And with the conservation part of the question, we are involved. <clears throat> we almost year after year help with road maintenances. We do obviously invite guests that are keen um, to donate some funds, and then we do rhino notching and putting in GPS chips into rhino horns and all those things. Um, same as with wild dog projects and cheetah projects, as well as lions and all of that. So we, we are involved with the conservation work. Um, it's an ongoing process. And Iggy, um, if people want to get involved with this sort of thing, how can they help? How can they make donations? How can they find out more? That is obviously done through our reservation office. Um, if you would like to come in um, and get involved in those projects, get in touch with the reservation office. They get in touch with the Parks Board admin and they find out what projects are outstanding and which ones can be done on which days. If the guest wants to come in, let's say, end of February at some weekend or midweek, um, I would know we need to notch two black rhinos or we need to brand a particular pride of lions. And you know those donations can go through to that project. And when the guests are in the lodge or in the reserve at that time, that project gets coordinated. So they are part of that while they are in the reserve. So they get to be part of the process. Is there a website that people can go to to find out more? Uh, in terms of conservation work. Or, or community work, the Tau Foundation you mentioned. Um, our our Tau website, um, mm -hmm. obviously there will be a part in the website where you get to contact people that will give you relevant information. Okay. Iggy, are you from the local area? Yes, I am from one of the local villages. Okay. And do you see, you must be an inspiration to a lot of the kids there and a lot of the youngsters finishing school. Is there an enthusiasm for young guys to become guides like you have? Uh, or is the general desire for people to move away from the villages to the big cities and try and make their fortunes there? What's what's the sort of general attitude and general interest in conservation in your local villages? Young people tend to have different aspirations in life. Um, you know, there are those that would love to come and work in the reserve, and there are those that have the passion to be where I am. And the ones that do have the passion, I've helped a lot of youngsters come up the ranks and some of them are already guides. Some of them are still coming up, studying and getting their qualifications. Um, I'm actually proud to say there's two young guys that are working with us that have just, just qualified as uh, rangers. And I was part of you know, mentoring and, and, and helping them get the their qualifications a lot. And, there are other young guys that I've also helped. Um, some of them are already managers all over the country um, over the 21 years that I have been a guide. And I'm still willing to help whoever is willing to, you know, come and say, look, I need help to, you know, get on to the same path that you are. And what do you think the major barriers are? If I'm a young guy, I've just finished school in one of the villages surrounding Madikwe. I want to be a guide. What are the barriers that are going to stop me from doing that? Finance, obviously. A lot of these um, ranger training or field guard training institutions are charging quite a substantial amount, um, which most people are not able to, you know, pay. Um, if we if we could have either a government or some sponsorship available. For these young kids, uh, I think we would produce some of the kids are brilliant um, that I've met. And we have some that are employed as barmen or waiters or what have you in, in most of the lodges, but they would love to see themselves as guys, but they just do not have the financial means of achieving that. Yeah. Okay. 
That makes sense. Do you have any message for the people watching the live cams at Tao, which is a big favorite? Um, <laughs> keep watching the Tao webcam. If you have any questions, hit us on Tao Game Rangers Facebook page. Uh, we're happy to answer all the questions that you ask. Or you can email us at rangers at taugamelodge.co.za. Any time of the day, we will be happy to answer any questions of what it is that you've seen, what time, beds, being, whatever. And possibly come and visit Tower Game Lodge. Definitely come and visit. It's even better to see it yourself than watching the webcam. Great. Thank you very much, Iggy. It's been wonderful chatting to you and finding out a bit more about Tower Game Lodge and Madikwe. Uh, for those of you who don't know, and perhaps missed it at the beginning, Madikwe is a malaria-free 75,000 hectare reserve on in the northwest province, and Tau is in the northwest corner of Madikwe, home to one of the biggest water holes there and a lot of animals that come past our live camera. Thank you very much, Iggy, and thank you very much, everyone, for watching. We'll see you next week. It's all a pleasure, James. Thanks for having me on your program.